As most of you know, I am working on a book on how to create communities for mutual aid and survival. And I'd like to share with you a couple of the communities I was a part of and what lessons they could teach and inspire us to build our own communities. One piece of advice I offer throughout the book is the need to create communities under a nondescript facade. Now, this is not paranoia. It is the reality of living under totalitarian governments. Whether you want to create a homeschooling, food co-op, credit union, disaster preparedness, survival, or self-sufficient community, the government will view you with suspicion. History shows that the number one cause of destruction of autonomous communities is government. In my upcoming book, I suggest that one way for a community to avoid unwanted attention is to organize as an artist's community. In researching history, for examples of communities that worked, I was surprised to discover that artists' colonies have been wildly popular and successful throughout the United States in the 18th and 19th centuries. Many are still operating to this day. One artist community that inspired me is Art City. In 2008, I received a commission from the city of Ventura, California, to paint one of the mechanical boxes on Main Street for their annual Art Walk Festival. The following year, I applied for and received the commission to create a temporary interactive art installation. It was then that I was introduced to the people at Art City. I started installing the bases and wiring everything together when a man asked if I needed any help. At first I thought he was a homeless person because he was tanned and dusty. I said sure and offered him a hundred bucks if he'll give me a hand for the day. He said he doesn't want any money, that he's a sculptor from Art City and that there were a half dozen people to help and all the tools, equipment, and even a forklift if I needed it. Russell was a big help, transporting the tubes in his pickup and helping me lower them onto the bases. I was deeply moved by the generosity and camaraderie shown me by Russell, Paul the owner and lead artist, Ramon, and the other artists. I have received similar treatment from artists' communities of other cities I worked in, except for Toronto, of course. While no one would accept any cash, they did accept a couple of cases of cold beer. Art City inspired me in ways I think we can apply to the communities we want to build. The first thing I liked about Art City is that it is nondescript. You could walk past it every day and not know it's there. It occupies one acre in a low-rent industrial area of Ventura. Across the street is a welding shop, and next door is an auto wrecker, and you assume the whole property is a junkyard. You would never guess that behind the wall is a wonderland of creative chaos. Everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and here we are on this beautiful afternoon in Ventura. Specifically, we are in an industrial part of Ventura on Dubber Street. This street is lined with auto repair shops. There's a welding operation over here. But we are here on Dubber Street to spend the afternoon in search of an honest-to-goodness hidden treasure. And it's located right over that wall in a place called Art City. The whole space employs the gray man strategy. Ventura is a small town, and if there was a shit hit the fan scenario and looters were to come up from LA, 
they would likely overlook Art City as a place to loot and focus on the many wealthy homes just a mile away. Even if looters were to target the community, it has many defensive advantages. There is a six-foot fence surrounding the entire space. Inside, a couple of towers would be ideal for observation and sniper positions. In addition, the area is a labyrinth of pathways and hidden spaces. Any invader would be disoriented and at a severe disadvantage with many sheltered locations to set up ambushes. The space is only an acre, yet you get lost in the numerous pathways and spaces the first few times you walk around. There are a number of buildings and even an Airstream trailer on the property. It could easily house 40 people in a pinch and using tents and improvised shelters another 30 people could be sheltered within the space. There are public bathrooms and an open-air kitchen that could be used to cook food for the entire community. This is advice I offer in my book when selecting a home base or meeting center. Does it attract attention? Is it strategically defensible? Can you easily convert the space into an emergency shelter or hospital. Some of the spaces could serve several functions from homeschool and classroom to meeting room, lecture hall and auditorium. They had already taken steps towards self-reliance. There were numerous solar panels on the roof. They had built a wind turbine generator and there were raised bed gardens everywhere. There are even a dozen chickens running around. In a social collapse scenario, there is enough space and supplies to triple their production to bring the community very close to self-sufficiency. In a grid-down scenario, water could be pumped in from the Ventura River only 50 yards away. Another lesson learned is that Art City as a screening process. Before you could run space there, you had to show your artist's portfolio. This helped screen out the phonies, pretenders, and wannabe freeloaders. I recommend that communities require a prerequisite before allowing new members to join. If you want to organize a homeschool community, you may want to ask new members first to provide some character references. If you are organizing a community defense group, new members should be able to provide a firearms license and maybe pass a three-gun course. New members might first have to have a ham radio license and a first aid certificate before being allowed to join a survivalist community. It is not as important what the prerequisite is as in having one to begin with. This is a way to test people if they are willing to spend a few hours making an effort to become a member. This weeds out those that want to join your community so long as they don't have to do anything. The last point I'll mention is that I liked that they had monthly musical performances and dances which helped bring the community together and raised funds to support the studio. All the events were open to the public and free, but donations were welcome. In building your communities, it is crucial to organize regular social activities that are fun. These could include music nights and picnics, barbecue, story night, wiener roasts around the campfire, and dozens of other activities. Before I left Ventura, I had one last commission to create the Flintstone characters for a trade show display. I thought it appropriate to bring them to Art City for a photo shoot. After all, what better location for the Flintstones than the stone quarry? So I hope you enjoyed our visit to Art City and that it can inspire ideas on forming your own communities. I'll leave you now with 
couple of minutes of footage from Ramon's one-man show opening party at the Ventura Museum. Thanks for watching and take care and good luck.